So in 2015, uh, Pope Francis released an encyclical address not only to the Catholic world, but to all peoples of goodwill. The content of his message is simple, that we all take care of our common home that is the earth. But it is in the very simplicity of the message that lies the complexity of the challenge. There is an apparent difficulty in convincing people to take care of our common home, the earth, due to our lifestyle that contributes to the growing challenges of climate change. This is mainly attributable to consumerism that is tied to individualism. The latter is characterized by self-centeredness, self-enclosedness, and greed. What sort of perspective do we need in order to advance the cause and the call to care for the earth? And what ethic is necessary that should be strengthened parallel to this call? I believe that among the significant but unfocused partners in this dialogue are philosophers. And in the context of my country, the Philippines, um, and its environmental situation and problems, I would like to speak about the challenge to be more aggressive in including the environment or ecology in what I'd call doing philosophy in the Philippines. For a context, philosophy, or at least Western philosophy, arrived in the Philippine shores together with the colonizers. But it was not until the last 50 or 60 years, or a little over, that the so-called Filipino philosophy emerged as a trend and as a distinct area study. It is the contention of my paper that there is a gap in Filipino, there is a gap in the Filipino philosophy discourse. And I would like to express this gap with, with this question, where is the environment in the Philippine philosophy discourse? To say that there is a gap does not mean that nothing has been said about the environment or ecology by Philippine academics on philosophy. Apparently, we can read some essays or discussions like that of Leonardo Mercado on environmental ethics in his monograph, The Filipino Mind. But still, it is my argument that there is a gap for the very reason that Filipino philosophy has mainly focused on themes or discussions in philosophical anthropology, social or polit political philosophy, ethics, and religion. Now, two points are worth highlighting in relation to this. And I think uh, this would explain why for me the question is important. Now, where is uh, the environment in Filipino philosophy? Foremost, uh, on the place of nature in Filipino culture. Leonardo Mercado notes that the typical Filipino's relationship with nature is reflected in his rituals. Cultural historians of the Philippines, like William Henry Scott would tell us, that prior to the colonization of the country, the locals revered and worshiped the personifications of natural forces, like celestial bodies or flowing waters. Nature was viewed as the home of the supernatural. Even dangerous cliffs and strange rock formations were invoked for safe passage. But this is quite ironic for a country whose culture and history, as explained earlier, has been intertwined with nature. Our country's political landscape, lar largely dictated by colonial experience, has defined and operationalized progress in capitalist terms. This has brought about devastations and environmentally damaging practices. In 1988, our Philippine bishops already made a bold assertion that the destruction of the environment in our country is getting serious when they released their pastoral letter titled what is happening to our beautiful land. And despite our country's constitution, which aims to protect and advance the right of our people's right to a balanced and healthful ecology in accord with the harmony and rhythm of nature, our country is experiencing unprecedented biodiversity crisis due to the destruction of original forests, freshwater and marine ecosystems. Precisely why I argue in this paper that the philosophical discourse in the Philippines has not taken to a higher level of seriousness the concern for the environment and the need for greater assertiveness to achieve climate justice. If philosophy, especially in a post-colonial context, must be a discourse of resistance, then it must be a reawakening of human consciousness 
an effort to interrogate people's views and assumptions, and a reflective enterprise that should enable us to come into deeper terms with ourselves. And when we speak of coming into terms with ourselves, this means understanding the problems that are existential only because they are ecological and concerns which are ecological because they touch the heart or the core of our very own existence. It would help if we'd navigate the significant points in the historical development of Filipino philosophy, which emerged at the height of calls for nationalism in the 1960s. The efforts to Filipinize philosophy was indicative of the nationalist factors which led to the shaping of what we now call Filipino philosophy. The first groups, group rather of Filipino philosophers more identifiable in their efforts to advance the discourse are those who searched for the essential Filipino, like Leonardo Mercado and Dionisio Miranda, who are, by the way, Filipino missionaries, Catholic missionaries. Mercado wrote in his book, Elements of Filipino Philosophy in 1970, and Dionisio Miranda in his book, Pagkamakatao, Being Human, Reflections on the Theological Virtues in the Philippine Context, and Loob, the Philippine within. And later I'll, I'll say something about law because this is uh, an attempt to Filipinize uh, metaphysics. Both Mercado and Miranda attempted to look for a certain kind of core that is necessary in reading the Filipino. For them, finding this core is a precondition to understanding the Filipino mind or his worldview. Another group of scholars prefer to speak of doing philosophy and they are critics of the first group. This group characterized by a synthetic approach to the study of the development of philosophizing in the Philippines. Some of them would reject the notion of Filipino philosophy if by the term it is meant a philosophy that organically sprung from an essentialized Filipino consciousness. In recent years, there has been an, an, an apparent change in the way Filipino philosophy has shaped in the country. And I'm referring now to the third group. Uh, this is our contemporary context in Filipino philosophizing, largely due to the influence of globalization, Filipino academics and philosophy have sought ways to apply their knowledge and learnings in philosophy to practical concerns like politics and culture. And especially under the administration of our outgoing president, Rodrigo Duterte, democracy has become the favorite topic or analysis of Filipino Filipino philosophy teachers and students. There is also a pragmatic value in this in that philosophy has been challenged to be relevant, particularly in the context of ASEAN integration, which has brought to life such concepts as regional qualifications framework and alignment of educational goals. So, you know, funding plays uh, a role in the shaping of uh, discourse in whatever academic discipline. Now, I'd like to summarize... Uh, that point, no? what is called Filipino philosophy is an ongoing discourse of Filipino scholars who assert our identity and location as a people vis-a-vis -vis the privileged discourse in the West. There is an effort or an attempt to analyze and reflect on matters or things that have fundamentally concerned philosophy in a manner of or in the context of something basically Filipino. However, I have a however here. Although Filipino philosophy can be rightly called a discourse of resistance, but its subject has been Western thought as a whole. And this is clear in how Filipino thinkers have tried to understand and interpret Occidental categories in their Filipinized version. But a discourse of resistance is not and cannot be complete if it does not also resist against other forms of oppression. In every philosophy, there is always an element of liberation a quest for freedom, even if it would sometimes mean questioning the very notion of freedom itself. So this is now the highlight. If Filipino philosophy is to advance, as it should be a discourse of resistance, especially in a post-colonial context, then it must integrate the environment or ecology, not just as a matter of academic thematic necessity, but as a concern, a real human concern. Arguably, Filipino academics in philosophy have not been gravitated towards the environment or ecology as a theme, as a concern. In my view, it took years before the environment would take the stage in philosophy 
here in the Philippines because conventionally, the discipline has been focused on mainstream topics such as God, the nature of the human person, the cosmos, and morality. If we may say something, if I may say something about each group, I would summarize it this way, but in the interest of time, I would not uh, dwell on this. But I just like to highlight one here because I think this would lead me or bridge me to my presentation later. That although the first group, uh, the, the Loob scholars, we call them the Loob scholars, are mainly anthropocentric, but the framework is to some extent useful in laying the groundwork for a possible Filipino philosophy on the environment. Because that is one thing that I will use in, in my conclusion. Filipino academics, I, I, I would assert, should start taking seriously the ecological crisis and its attendant problems. Now, where should we start? Where should we start? I must say that there are many entry points. We may, in fact, go back to the ontology behind our lack of interest in caring for our common home. But I would give, as it is my bias, more preference for a philosophy that promotes the basic ethical requirements that would enable us, Filipinos, to struggle for the environment. As I remarked earlier, the Loob scholars in their search for the essential Filipino were mainly anthropocentric. However, the framework they made are to some extent useful in laying the groundwork for a possible Filipino philosophy on the environment, at least for a starting point. Therefore, as an essential step in response to the foregoing, this work proposes a Filipino environmental philosophy built on the, need, on, on the concept, on the notion of pakikisangkot, being involved, and pakikiisa, that is being in solidarity. These are sub-themes or topics in the writings of Enriquez Santiago and Dionisio Miranda, authors who have contributed much to the advancement of Filipino philosophy. But here I would like us to take a little uh, quick or short detour on, on Miranda's notion of law, because this, this will be very important uh, for later. Uh, Miranda would say that uh, loob is the deeper core of the self and the consciousness of the person and also the awareness uh, of, of oneself. Loob is found in the person who is a free moral subject that has both katauhan and pagkatao, humanity and humanness. The total meaning of loob or the Filipino within is to be found neither in humanity alone or humanness alone, but in both. Which would bring us to this claim now that it is not enough coming from Miranda's notion of loob for a person to just understand oneself. Because if the call uh, of philosophy is for us to understand the self, this understanding of the self must lead us to a greater understanding about the world around us. The understanding of the self requires moving out from it. That is why loob, the Filipino within, is not just an anthropological category but also an ethical category. Loob is essentially an interrelational and social concept before it is private, before it is a privately personal concept. So Miranda, uh, expanding this notion, Miranda would speak now of pakikipang kapwa loob. Kapwa means in Filipino, the other, okay? Entering into the, the, the within of, of the other. And loob may be, uh, uh, may be associated with these eight levels of social relations. But for the purpose of a provisional uh, proposal, I would, as I have mentioned earlier, just uh, pick out two, pakikisangkot and, and pakikiisa. But, but there's a possibility of interweaving uh, the, these eight categories so that we'd have a holistic reading and uh, framework for an, an ethic of the environment. So here it can be argued that because loob is not an individualistic or privatistic perspective on morality, but an interrelational concept, uh, then one is called to deepen not just the understanding of the self, but also the relationship of, of the self to, to the others. And so we go back to these two significant concepts that are hopeful or useful for a groundwork of Filipino environmental philosophy. Pakikisangkot, being involved, and pakikiisa being in solidarity. In the face of an increasing concern for climate change, the invitation is to go back to our assumptions and to interrogate them. We are currently experiencing injustices, not just in the ordinary legal sense, but through the actual imbalances and asymmetries in our lives getting more felt because of climate change. 
The destruction of the environment is not just a scientific matter. It is also a social and an ethical one. Whatever damage that has happened externally is mainly and essentially due to the injustices that have happened in the relational and the individual level. We have not cared for our world because we have not cared for ourselves. Above all, we have not cared for one another. This now is the implication. This is what I, I, I draw out from uh, the two notions of solidarity and being involved. There are injustices, especially against those who are vulnerable in society that cause harm and damage to them because we have caused harm and damage to our own planet. We are challenged to overcome our greed and our self-centeredness and therefore struggle for authentic freedom. No struggle for the environment can be won without involving as many people possible. We can only save the planet if we move people to be involved. Pakikisangkot. In Filipino, it is interesting to note that the word sangkot carries a double meaning. It may mean involved in the positive sense, but it may also mean involved in the negative sense. What does this mean? Uh, pakikisangkot is important in our struggle to save the environment because if one is not going to involve oneself in the protection of nature, one cannot but be involved, meaning one cannot but also be a victim of whatever vulnerable situation this destruction of our planet may further cause. Involvement, however, is one layer of the process that is needed in order to advance our struggle for the environment. At a more profound level, we need solidarity. This is Pakiki Isa. Now, the root word for Pakiki Isa is Isa. That is one. Uh, that's the, uh, one, the number one, uh, which means uh, solidarity requires being one, not only in terms of grouping and for logistical considerations, but above all in terms of focus and thinking as a people. Viewed through the lens of Miranda's notion of loob, this has a deeper meaning. Pakiki Isa is being one in terms of the union of our katauhan, of our humanity, and therefore as a planet. Solidarity is the union of our concerns, our concerns that are found in the intersection of our psychological personality and our moral character. Applied to the environment, this means that the care, this is now the conclusion for the earth, that can only be truly the subject of our concern if it would touch our, our psychological personality constituted in our kalooban, uh, what we feel deep within. The environment and the destiny of the earth must be our central concern as free subjects or human persons. It must also be the concern of our moral character of our ethical nature as persons. The ongoing discourses and conversations in Filipino philosophy have advanced the discipline in our country, making it relate and connected to various topics like democracy, women, gender, culture, even cyber technology. However, and this is my challenge, it must also bridge Filipinos to think about their environment, about ecology. Filipino philosophy can be an instrument of change by emphasizing that solidarity is not just political, but also existential, but above all, environmental. Philosophy can be used to make people understand that our search for meaning is always within the context of our relationships, and human relationships does not just extend to human persons, but also to nature itself. It is actually within nature and inseparable from nature. Thank you so much for your time.